my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, Rotary, uh, the foundation, has decided to take a look at implementing a new program to it, and it's called Community Assessments. And I wanted to go over that with you in this show because there's an important part of the community assessment that most people do not realize, and it has less to do with the regulation, of, I would say, of implementing this as opposed to the benefits that is going to be gained by doing this. In this program, I'm actually going to be using a PowerPoint to go over the step-by-step -step process and give a little bit of background information on why these community assessments become so important, how they could be used, and points and um, ideas, basically, that could improve your overall view of how these uh, grants will work and how these global grants then would become more effective in measuring people's lives and also assessing the ways that they've benefited from these projects. So the first slide that I have actually shows the community assessment itself. This is District 5240's community assessment. And uh, the way I've, I put my title in there, the reason why I'm involved with this, actually I work directly with the foundation in a number of areas, including as a technical coordinator for uh, CAJES, which are overseers and evaluators of global grants uh, around the world. The picture that I have here, the next set, um, actually shows some of the areas that I've been, I've been to a number of areas around the world, and in these areas uh, include South America, Central America, some ar areas in Asia, and uh, the picture here shows some of the different sites that I've been to. I've been to Chile, it's the top picture there, evaluating an ambulance project. The one on the bottom is actually in Guatemala, we took a look at that one, and the other one is in Honduras, and so um, these are some of the projects I've been to. At this point in time, the uh, community assessments were actually not required. These were uh, three, four, five-year-old projects that we took a look at. But as you moved into the different areas of this, we found out that, in fact, having a community assessment would benefit the projects because we would be able to see how the community actually would benefit from that and be able to measure the outcomes of the specific grants that we were doing. Grants, by the way, global grants will average anywhere from thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollars all the way up into um, over half a million dollars of some of the projects I've taken a look at. One thing that the Global Grant uh, Community Assessment does, it creates a partnership. And also with the partnerships, you have ownership of it, you have the um, sustainability that then occurs because of that one. And I want to show you some of the projects as an example of how this actually works. As we take a look at some of the projects that we've done, the top picture is a water project that was done probably in the year 2005 or 6. That project then was uh, modified in, and if you see these different pictures, the lower one on the left is a water project that was done in the Honduras area, and uh, the picture that you'll see is a Guatemalan picture of a lady that actually had the benefit of growing her own crops. And when I say we have to take a look at ownership of that, one thing Rotary does and does well is actually build these projects. Now the disadvantage to um, doing the projects through Rotary is that sometimes the Rotarians get so involved that it's not that beneficial because the owners or the ownership of the community feels that it's a Rotary project as opposed to a community project. And that's why community assessments become important. Ownership has to be with the people that are benefiting it. In other words, if the beneficiary feels that the project is a rotary project, you miss, the, you miss the spot. The people that are benefiting from it have to realize or feel that it's actually their project. And in order for it to be sustainable, the sustainability component comes from the ownership of the beneficiaries. They now become the people involved with not only maintaining it, but the people that will watch it and take the feeling that it's actually theirs to keep forever, as opposed to if it breaks, Rotary's going to come back and fix it. We don't want that to happen, and it's happened in the past. One of the booklets that Rotary, uh, the Rotary Foundation offers to you is this booklet here. It's a community assessment booklet. You'll find this online. I have the number up there. It's 605EN. EN stands for the English version of that. And in this book, you'll find pretty much everything you'll need as far as the tools. What you won't see in there, oftentimes, well, actually, you won't see in there, are some of the points that you as Rotarians will be able to benefit from in the long run. The community assessment 
focuses on an area of focus, one of the six areas. As an example, if we're looking at water and sanitation, the community assessment will then evaluate the need of that water, where it's going to come from, how it's going to be distributed, whether or not the people are going to use it, if they have secondary sources for that one, and if in fact that the water is something that they want. So this is something that we want to take a look at. The other part that's important to this, and I want to share this with you because it is not truly reflected in the community assessment, is the fact that as Rotarians, if it's a water project you're doing, go beyond the scope of water. Take a look at the incomes of it, how much the people are making per household. Take a look at the educational component. Take a look at how many children or people are living in each household and how much they're going to benefit from the water. And the reason I say that, if you do all of this, you will find that you have a baseline, a baseline of incomes, you have a baseline of health, you have a baseline of education. All these components become part of an overview of a community assessment. If you don't take a look at that, you can never go back to remeasure those components of that project. So take a look at above and beyond what that project is going to be involved with because you can't go back and get those numbers again. And as Rotary uh, projects and Rotarians, we want to make sure that we are able to measure all of the benefits. I'll give you an example. In a water project I went to, um, we took a look at the water needs of that one, and I found that in this community, it was a community in central Mexico, 25% of the people were suffering from diabetes. As we put the water project in, we found out that that number dropped to a more normal level. That more normal level became 8, 9, 10%. So it went from 25% diabetic cases in the community down to about 9 or 10 after the water project. And we were trying to figure out why that was. Well, what we found out was that this community could not afford to buy water, and it was cheaper for them to buy sodas, pops, punches, than it was for them to actually purchase water. And for that reason, they were just loading down on, on pure sugar. Sugar syrup, basically, is what it was. And had we had not done that needs assessment for health, we would never have been able to identify the health benefits of actually having that water project apart from waterborne diseases. So that's something that becomes pretty important to us. And that's something I want to convey to you. Measure everything and anything you can when you come into these communities. Topics that we're going to cover, uh, community meetings, surveys, interviews, uh, focus groups, uh, asset inventory and community mapping. All of these become one of the important parts of a community assessment. And we're going to touch on each one of these, starting with uh, community meetings. This is a community meeting, one that I had done in um, an area in Guatemala. And as you see, the center gentleman that's speaking is a Rotarian, and he is getting and gathering information from that community meeting that was um, included in a questionnaire but he was able to reach out to them because he had been working with this community for probably six to nine months. They knew who he was. At this time, we were gathering not only information for the project itself, but also the buy-in. The buy-in because that is an important part of that. As I told you before, the community has to feel that it's their project. And in order for them to do that, you have to ask them the questions. Well, why would you need this? What could you do to help out? All these questions, and that is done through a rotary contact. We then have surveys. The surveys are done in each of the communities, and you'll see here most of the surveys are non, not by paper, but this one happened to be. In these surveys, you take a look at and you analyze each individual household and family. You see where they are, the benefits that they have potentially from the project, but also what they have currently so that you have a baseline of understanding what that is. These surveys also give an opportunity for the people that are in these communities the households to express what their desires are that they need, the essentials, because you'll find that most of the time they will identify something that they actually need as opposed to something that they already have. Interviewing a community is also something that's very important. As we interview a lot of these people, we find that, in fact, um, there's secondary benefits that you'll see. Education, for example, sh shows up in some of these. Health will show up in some of these. Oftentimes, there'll be a concern that uh, either a non-governmental organization or the government itself is restricting some of the resources that these communities have. So with an interview process, you're able to vet out a lot of the issues and potential problems that would occur in some of these neighborhoods. 
focus groups. Um, and when we talk about fo focus groups, these focus groups could be different groups. It could be a group within a community. It could be a group within a government. It could be a group within a non-governmental organization or a foundation. So these focus groups become important because they will probably be the ones to monitor, marshal through, and make sure that these projects move forward fluidly. And also, because of the fact that they are a focus group, they have a little bit more strength as far as what they're going to be able to convey and do within these project sites itself. This group here was actually a neighborhood watch group. Each of the communities sent one representative into this group. It was organized by um, a, a world organization for water, and they were the ones that we were able to reach because each one of those people represented a given community. Not only because of information we gathered, but information also we planned on distributing outward. So that's where focus groups become an important part of the tool for community, uh, community ass assessments. Assets inventory, another part that became important. And this picture here I took it was in actually in the um, Honduran area, actually Guatemala. This was in Guatemala, and we were meeting with the people of these communities, and we were talking about what they had. Now, they had education, they had food, they did have some income, but they did not have water. And I thought that was pretty important. So we knew for a fact that we had a lot of people, we had manpower, we had pretty much everything, we just lacked the water. And uh, that was part of what came out of this group. What we found the most beneficial for this whole meeting was the fact that because we were lacking water, the only source of water that we, we, that we would have would be to drill a well into that to bring that water in. And so that's what um, Assets Inventory does. It takes a look at everything that's available. It also not only identifies the resources that this community currently has, but also resources that they would be able to tap on if we were to provide those for them. In this case, it was specifically water. If they had water, they would be uh, actually pretty doing quite well for themselves um, in their life. Another one uh, of assets inventory, you can go beyond the actual group meetings itself, and you go into the households. In these households, you could find out what they have, where it came from, uh, and points like that. For example, this picture shows in the back you have an actual stove. This is an eco stove. It was done by one of the Rotarian groups before. This eco stove, as you'll see, is chimneyed out. So what do we know? We know that we are not contaminating the air that these people are breathing by actually having no chimney or the smoke actually staying internal. This is exhausted out. You'll also see that in this uh, eco stove, it's built up quite thick, and so there is no risk of children being burnt. And it's also more efficient because now you're able to insulate in the heat, and the heat then is distributed only to the top of that stovetop. So um, again, we knew that was a fact. If you look at the food that they're eating, the food is um, all quite healthy. Most of the food that they have is grown there on spot. We saw no containers, so we knew for a fact that this family and this community they were actually raising and growing their own food, or they had a resource for that. You see the, fire, um, the, uh, the ice chest in the background. Uh, that ice chest is fairly new. We also knew for a fact that they were aware then with that ice chest of how to handle food itself and that it could potentially spoil. Otherwise, they would not have the ice chest in place. You see a table being set up. You see uh, pots and pans overall. The overall health of these people are quite healthy. You look at the clothing they're wearing, and you know for a fact that these people have not been roughing it too much. Their clothing, everything, and their resources throughout was something that they've been proud of and that they've developed over the years, as opposed to um, housing that I saw in this same general area made out of either cardboard or out of thatch and uh, dirt floors. You see a concrete floor in this one. So that is that assets inventory, understanding better what these communities actually have in place because then you could see if in fact they're going to need the project that you're going to be putting together for them. Community mapping, uh, another important part of that. With community mapping, what you have is you actually go into these communities. You find out the resources that they have there. You take a look at what each community in the general area has because you could then find if, in fact, there's a, a lower income, um, a, a less um, benefited community versus something that's more benefiting, and why. What would cause these benefits in changing uh, in level areas in the same given community? For example, this picture here you'll take a look at. The, store, the schools in the back, this was done at a school, was actually quite nice. 
the people you see um, all doing quite well. There was a well being dug in this community um, and they actually were planning on having water. Now what was interesting is the well was actually being dug by a, um, a company that was um, growers of cane sugar. And these, uh, the cane sugar company had actually contaminated the um, aquifer. And so what they did in response to that and being identified was that they were then, re knowing that they were responsible, actually dug a well deeper to get a deeper aquifer of water to supply this community. So that was paid for 100% by a company. Um, again, community mapping. We knew why, we knew where, and we were able to identify who was the one responsible for some of the problems that they were having in these communities. And it, ultimately, they were the ones that paid for this. In this project specific, Rody was planning on doing a project but never had to do it because of the fact that we identified a source, a resource for that community to actually get the water that they needed. This is kind of a, I'm going to go over right now, this is an application. The application or I would say the form that you're going to be filling out. It's a three-page form that you as a, a Rotary uh, Club will be filling out, actually will be responsible for. Because this was an English version of that so you can see it easier. I put this on the screen and I broke it up where so you can see each one of the questions. This gives you kind of the outline of what we're going to be looking for. Um, some of the resources for that, for example, you have community assessment tools. That was the brochure that I showed you earlier. And some of the areas that we're going to be taking a look at um, as we go through this questionnaire. Realizing that um, a lot of the questions being posed to you, had you not get, been given the background for that, would be a little bit daunting. It would probably be a little bit intimidating. But now that you understand that what we are looking for specifically are these key components, I think it's going to be a little easier for you to fill out. The first question that you'll be clicking into is a beneficiary, community, or institution. So you'll fill in that box. The box then that gets filled in, it expands. Um, you could write this, and I, what I re recommend you do is you write it actually on a Word doc. Um, be, the reason for that is you could then cut and paste it into the box itself using Word document. Also, the advantage to that is that you could then send it to the benefiting community and have them confirm these or have them actually fill it out with a Word doc, you could then Google Translate that and put that into the box or you can now exchange that information back and forth with the different groups. Uh, community uh, Groups within a community that will receive a clear, direct, immediate benefit, again, same thing. You then have the beneficiaries, uh, the demographic information, relevance, and by the way, on that, when we say demographics, you want to know the age, the uh, genders, the number of families that you will have in each of these, the number of people living in each household, all of this information becomes relevant to each and every one of these projects. My suggestion is always gather more information than you need because it's going to be something that you'll be able to count on later on and find out how effective your projects actually are. Who conducts the assessment or conducted this one here? You have a checkbox of all three. My recommendation is that you will have somebody on site where the project actually is being done, doing the project um, evaluation itself and filling out this assessment. You also want to be, have, make sure that everybody else is involved with that, including you, the international sponsor. So you will be the funding club. But you want to know what's going on. You want to understand better how this community is coming through with these, uh, this information, these facts, these statistics, and also a cooperating organization. Now, I will give you an example for the, of this. Um, one project I evaluated was being done almost exclusively by a cooperating organization, a foundation. They had come in there, they had been approached by the Rotary Club in that area. The Rotary Club then handed over the project to them because they had all the information, uh, gathering information they had, and they actually ran the project. Unfortunately, in this instance, because it was being run so much by the cooperating organization, that the foundation or that the Rotary Club had no idea what was going on, how the money was being spent, and when it was asked from the international club, you know, what was going on with it, there was no answer. We had to go directly to the cooperating organization. Now you think about that. With the community assessment, where is the buy-in? Where would the community best be served knowing that this is a Rotary project? So there was actually no, there was no cooperation within that group. You have to be aware that each and every person, each and every entity from the sponsoring club to the host club to the non-governmental organization, the cooperating club, to the community, the beneficiaries, 
all have to work together in doing these community assessments. And one of the key parts of doing this is that this, key, this uh, community assessment brings those groups together. You sit down and actually resolve and solve issues that you have. Best solutions, best practices, all of the above should come out of this before you even start your project. Uh, some of the other groups, by the way, that was cut off would be hospitals, local governments. Uh, again, we work quite often with local governments because local governments will sometimes be your resource. Um, assessment dates, you'll be able to mark in and, and label those dates specific to what you're doing. Uh, methods and types that you use, and by, by the way, it says check all. My recommendation would be use all, as many of those as you can Try and include in your community assessment because you reach more people. You have now written documentation. You have verbal documentation. And by the way, when you interview people, oftentimes you have to do a verbal because in these developed countries, they do not either read the language or read or they do not understand the language that it's being uh, presented into. So that's why interviews are important. You should be able to do it verbally, but make sure that you take notes, uh, clear, concise notes, as you do each and every one of these interviews. Go down to the farthest group. Uh, it's good to interview not only families, but individuals within a family. Go to school, interview children that are playing on a playground to try and get information from them, because you will find that some of the facts are actually being masked, unfortunately. Um, some people think it's important that they show that they're having a better life than or just the opposite. They will tell you that they need a lot more than they already have. So all these things become an important part of a community assessment tool. Some of the other things you'll get. Uh, who from the community participated? You need to know that. The list of the community needs. This is something that um, all three groups should be identified with. And by the way, you can go beyond the list of three, put in as many of those as you want. And then once you have that list, you prioritize these lists. Same thing for the second part. You're going to prioritize each and every one of those parts to see how important those things become in the overall. What's going to be interesting as you do these community assessments also is that as you go through this, you may have thought that you had identified a specific need as the number one priority. As you go through this community assessment, you will find that potentially it would be something else. It may be the second one. So you have to be able to focus in on each and every one of these points and say, you know what, uh, they have water. Uh, the water is not the problem. It may be money, it may be distribution, it may be how they hold or handle the water that becomes the issue to that. So that's why a community assessment becomes such an important tool. The next one we take a look at is uh, concerning the needs. Uh, and again, this is how you're prioritizing it, your project primary goals. Um, how would your project activities be accomplished? So you're gonna now start designing it the challenges of accomplishing these goals, what your resources are, how it's going to be implemented, who's going to be doing that one, and how the a community is addressing the challenges. So in other words, you have the buy-in for that. The uh, last part of it is why are project uh, activities the best way to meet these? So you're going to take a look at these and make sure that the community understands what is the most important part of that one. So as we went through some of these ones, by the way, uh, I think it's important that we as Rotarians all realize that when we go through these uh, community assessments, it creates a partnership. So you shouldn't be the one going in there. Um, I have clubs say, you know what, I'm doing a project as an example in Guatemala um, and I want to go down there. I want to be able to handle this community assessment project uh, assessment myself because I think it's important I understand it because our club is the one funding it. That's not always the case. It's sometimes it's best, actually it is best, to have the local people actually gather this information. They will get more consistent data, they will be a, they'll have a better understanding of the cultures, they'll know the resources because there are some governmental resources that we as um, outsiders would not be aware of, also governmental restrictions. So it is best to start with the local people, the local Rotarians, we call them the host clubs. Get them involved, engage with it, and find out with them what the resources are, and have them actually reach into the community. Why is that important? We talk about sustainability. Sustainability is going to occur when you have somebody close to the ground, somebody that's going to be able to go in there, and if there's a problem, they would know who to go to. That's the sustainability part of it. If the people that they feel would be the ones to re resolve the issues that lived in the United States, for example, chances are they would never contact you. They wouldn't know how. 
So that's why it's important that you have local people doing the buying component of that. But when you work with uh, non-governmental organizations, they are, by the way, great to work with, excellent. Oftentimes, majority, and I've seen this, majority of the funding for some of these global grants actually comes from non-governmental organizations, foundations. They have a focus. They are very specific on what they're trying to accomplish. It may be a water uh, organization. It may be an education. It may be health, whatever it would be. But they are experts in that field. They would have a lot of that information and data, and they would have the resources available on how to get these done. So take a look at that as another potential. The last one I'm taking a look at is the actual governments themselves as a cooperating organization. Governments are able to bring in resources that they have because they are working with the local governments, are working with state governments, state governments are working with federal governments, and they all realize that you as a Rotary Club are helping them out. And so they will give you a lot of resources to make sure that you are successful at what you do. And they will give you a lot of resources also, including staff, including data, including information. They are the ones that actually do the census in a lot of these communities. So a lot of the information they will have with you, work with them. That's an important part of that. If you do not work with them, you'll find out that by bypassing it, there's a little bit of intimidation on their part. And you may not get the cooperation that you need in the long run. Again. When we look at sustainability as one of the components of a successful project, if you do not have the government backing the project you've done, they may literally shut that project down. And that's what I think is important. When we ultimately start putting these community assessment projects together, or assessments together, you'll find that you may not have all the information. Go back. Don't be intimidated by it because a successful project is going to start with a successful community assessment. If you don't have that, it's not going to work. This is going to identify pretty much each and everything that you're going to have to do to make a global grant successful. And if you want your grant to be successful, and if you want the money that you're using from your club members and Rotarians that contribute, actually all Rotarians that contribute to the foundation, your, your duty, your job, is to make sure that you get these community assessments completed as best you can. It, it's not something that is a requirement that you have to do. It's something you really should do. I think that's an important part of understanding why the Rotary Foundation has put together the requirement of having a community assessment. With that, I'd like to say that Rotary has done quite a few great things around the world. Community assessment is going to be one tool that we're going to be using to make sure that each and every one is going to become better and better. With that, um, don't be intimidated. Take a look at Global Grants. They're doing wonderful things, great things around the world. With that, thank you very much. We will see you next time. <music>